Hello everyone, and welcome to my multi-part build of the Hypercube Evolution 3D printer. This printer is being built using the designs made freely available by Scott3D on Thingiverse. In the description below, you will find links to both his Thingiverse page and his build log. So, why am I building a printer when there are so many kits available, you ask? Well, currently I have a TiVo Tornado printer, which for all intents and purposes is a great printer with a large build volume and a good price. However, what it lacks is the ability to change tool heads with ease. Instead, to change a nozzle or to change a throat is a rather laborious process. This is where my changes to the Hypercube Evolution design comes in. I want to build a series of tool heads to carry out a number of tasks, much like the original Hypercube design by Tech2C, where I can switch to a different print nozzle or a different fabrication process altogether with only a single screw being undone. In this build series, we'll be building the base Hypercube Evolution design, as well as three different tool heads to use. The first is a direct drive 3D printing tool head using the Mark III design by Joseph Prusher. Second, a tool head using a laser for etching and cutting wood and other materials. Finally, an engraving tool head that uses an inexpensive DC motor found in many cheap CNC engraver kits from AliExpress and other sites. Using the build configuration spreadsheet Found on the Thingiverse page, I have ordered all the parts required to build a printer and engraver with a max build volume of 300 by 300 by 400. In this build video, we'll be assembling the frame of the printer. So let's get started. The design dimensions that I have chosen requires the following 30 by 30 extrusion lengths. Four 600 millimeter lengths, four 420 millimeter lengths, and six 410 millimeter lengths, as well as some internal and external right angle brackets and a bunch of M5 screws. To start with, we will build one side of the frame from the top down using one 600 millimeter length and one 410 millimeter length. To improve strength, we will use both internal brackets and external ones. Later on, we will need to remove some of the external brackets for the Y axis. However, for now, we'll put them in to help keep the frame square. Then we'll go down 100 millimeters and place another 410 millimeter extrusion as we're building the Dual Z version of the Hypercube Evolution. I ordered longer parts than required for the legs. I need to place my bottom cross member 110 millimeters from the bottom of the frame. I did this so that there's plenty of space to put the electronics and keep the system nice and compact. And now I'll repeat the same process for the other side of this frame. So there we have one side of the frame. 
Now all I have to do is the same thing again for the other side. And there we have the second side completed. Now all we have to do is connect to the two halves together. So that completes the first part of this build. As you can see, the frame is quite heavy duty and does not flex at all. In the next part, we'll be installing the Y axis rods into this frame. Please be sure to like, subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when the next part of this build is made available. If you have any thoughts or comments on this video, please make sure you leave a comment below as I want to make videos that help empower you to build and make anything. See you later guys.